Hey up everybody. Welcome back to another instalment. As you can see, I'm underneath Joseph Rover and we're going to replace the rear brake pads. Now, as you can see, can you see you can see me? Um, it has had a caliper relatively recently and there's nothing actually wrong with the brake pads on it this side however the other side um the caliper is probably original to the car uh, there's not a lot wrong with it but uh the slide pins on the other side oh they were tiger tight and what's actually happened is it completely blasted the pads out of it on the inside and uh, the um, inside pad over the other side was down to like less than one mil thick and is about ready to take the disc and uh, yeah so it's quite important as i say in a lot of my brake job videos these uh, caliper sliders there you need to take them out you need to clean them and you need to apply fresh grease and you won't necessarily have a problem with brake binding and uh, so yeah i just thought i'd bring you along and um We'll chuck a set of pads in the back of this. And what you'll need is a 12mm for getting the caliper off, an 11mm just in case you need it if you wanted to undo the bleed nipple, but I never tend to do that because disasters happen and you usually end up buying yourself a caliper. You need your brake pads, only small things, wire brush, brake clean bit of copper slip and the all-important caliper wine back tool so let's get somewhere near so we can set about it and hopefully these shouldn't be too tight and then not bad so we'll let them off So yeah, Joseph's just recently purchased this and um, I've got a few little bits and bobs to do. Um, minor, minor service work. I have done the dreaded spark plug uh, change on this car already. I was going to film it, but it really wants to sit and watch me swear for two hours doing the plugs on a V6 Rover because they're not the easiest of jobs, let's face it. There are more difficult cars out there to do the plugs on, but... Uh, <laughs> these are uh, somewhat difficult so they're done um, we've got an oil and filter change to do uh, I shall film that for you and um, I might even show you just as a quick film uh, I might even do it after this just how quick and easy it is to put an air filter in one of these and uh, if you don't know I think you'll be pleasantly surprised so I'll get the caliper off give it a tug Slide that out of the way. Like so. Stay. Okay, so it's quick clean. You want to clean your hardware. If you are doing discs and pads, replace your hardware. But, uh, these ones don't look too bad. I'll put a bit of grease around them in a moment. Now, while I'm here, I'm just going to wind this piston back. Basically, you can't really see, there's two slotted pins. You need to place them in the slotted pin on the piston. Let's drop this down so you can see. There we go. And what I shall do is, in fact, I'll bring you in to show you. Let's have a look. We have... Some slotted uh, face on the piston and you'll see if I show you the pads the pads are actually sided that's your outer one for there and that's your inner one and your inner one has the brake audible warning squeaker on it them. and you'll notice there is one of these little tits sticking out there and that needs to line up with that in there so 
yeah we'll warm that piston back in they are very tight so bear with and uh, we'll crack on sliding it back down there so you can see back in the camera out. There we go. So yeah, there goes out of the way. There. Get that in. Let's rewind it in, James. Like so. That's a different piston to the other side, that's handy. <sighs> All various different shapes and sizes of these. And uh, you never know what I've got coming in next, so that one looks a bit better. No, that was too small as well. About this one. Oh, that won't do. Needs just clamp into there the magnetic. Take that all the way down. I'll try again. I must apologise for looking a little bit like meatloaf at the moment, it's very warm and I'm in the process of growing my long hair back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Let's take it all the way down to the base. Like so, keep an eye on it. Oop. Oh, here's the mill, uh, ice cream man again. I was out of it turning up when I'm filming. Well, do. Perfect. So yeah, that's the caliper wound back. So what we'll do now is just leave that rest in there. We'll pull the all important slide pins out. This bottom one doesn't feel too bad. See it returns on itself. That's how they should be. This top one doesn't. So it's just a case, you've got to be gentle with it because they've got a rubber boot. So just try and fold it back on itself, there you go, and that will come, and that is just dry old copper slip, and I'm not the world's biggest fan of using copper slip on brakes, purely because of that, because it does dry out and it does clump up and it makes, uh, makes your brakes seize on a little bit, nothing major, but uh, you know you could use silicon grease. Uh, you could even use wheel bearing grease on it, it wouldn't hurt it, but I use a proper um, brake caliper lubricant and it's safe to use with um, pads, calipers, slider pins, hardware and been using it for a while actually. I keep saying I'm going to do a product review on it but I never get uh, never get around to doing it. So yeah that one's not brilliant either. So what we'll do is I'll show you the way I clean these out anyway, so I'll just go quickly over with a cloth to get all the old rubbish off and then get some WD-40 and inside the holes spray a load of WD-40 in the holes till it runs out like so and then put them back in connect it, give it a good spin like so Pull it back out, 
like so. You see all the crap that sticks to it. Get rid of that. We'll do the same with the top one. Like so. That's not too bad. And then what we'll do, a quick wipe. Brake cleaner. Inside, you see all the crap running out the bottom. Like so. A bit on the chemical while we're at it. Clean the face of the piston off. There we go. Let a quick dry. Like so. Make sure the pad caliper ears are clean, which they are. So this um, caliper's now I'm brand new. At, uh, Whoever fitted them in the past, particularly the other side, what a moron. Anyway, far be it from me to moan about other people's mechanical skills because we all make mistakes. So, this is what I use. I use it when I do every brake job, I'm going to do it on the trucks, do it on the cars. Um, it's Ceratec, uh, made by Permatex, and um, it's a brake parts lubricant, it's ceramic. And it's purple. Uh, it resists a lot of heat. And if you're like me, you like to keep your cars clean. You like to keep, you know, use your jet wash and all that kind of stuff. This stuff does not wash off, even with chemicals. And you know, I've had cars come back to me three years down the line, needed another set of brake distance pads with 45, 50,000 miles on the clock. And I take the old stuff off, uh, take the old equipment off, and it's still present. So it's expensive, but it's well worth it because I don't get comebacks off of it. So, what we do, we don't go too heavy with this, because you don't want it to uh, lock the brakes up all together. And it's important that you get some grease around the mating surface where the little rubber boot goes over. Like so. We'll put that one in there. Like so. And they should... Just slightly return themselves like that, which is perfect, nice and free. Warm my hands. Same again with this one. Like so. Put that one back in. Make sure it returns, which it does. Make sure they're nice and level. And what we'll do, we'll get the inner pad, put a little bit of lube over the back, put a little dab on the ears if you wanted to. I never normally do that, but just out of practice, because you know, a lot of this crap ends up underneath. Or well, the corrosion, so to say, ends up underneath the hardware. The hardware is stainless steel, and what happens is over time, I see it quite a lot, is there's a lot of crap and dirt that will build up, and this over time will actually lift and it sticks the brake pads to the disc, and it, uh, you end up with a brake bind situation. So we'll slide that in there, like so, and the front one, I'll just put a bit on there. Just to be generous, you can put the uh, grease straight onto the front of the caliper ears like I'm doing here. It's more efficient to do it like that to be honest because rather than grease the pad you could get it in the wrong place and you end up wasting grease. I mean, nobody wants to waste this grease, not like £25 a tub. So, slide that in there and this is the uh, tricky bit. That other least piece of hardware it needs to go back in like so. That doesn't fit very well at all. Never mind. Yeah, okay. Slide these out of the way. Get yourself some room. Yeah. We'll bring the caliper back round like so, and hopefully I've put the piston in the right place because these can be a sod. That one. 
off that one. Slide it straight on. Let it hang a little bit. A little bit of grease on the securing bolts. One in the bottom. Like so. Come on, bite. So, next one. Slide that in there. Like so. Need 12 mil. And all the way up. You haven't got to go completely wild with these. And um, just use your common sense. Very simple braking system. Like so. Same there with that one. It should be nice and free. Like so. Now, uh, interesting point. Uh, do not pull the handbrake until you've pumped the brakes up. Uh, I've seen it done a lot of times over the years where somebody's done the rear brake, particularly if it has a ratchet handbrake on it like this. Uh, they've pulled the handbrake up before they've pulled, actually pumped the brakes and it completely ruins the ratchet mechanism on the inside of the caliper. So if you have just replaced your caliper or you are doing distant pads for instance, if you do that it will completely ruin it and you've just bought yourself a caliper. So I'm going to step inside the car now, I'll pump the brakes up, I'll operate the handbrake. So you can see how it all works, and then we'll take it from there. Should. Took all the slack, this turns freely, and brakes released, everything's good. So, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, all that kind of stuff, leave them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks very much.